Hello, my name is Jim McNabb. I am the author of this text and a family physician in private practice at Full Circle Family Medicine of Piedmont Healthcare in Mooresville, North Carolina. I am a fellow of the American Academy of Family Physicians and adjunct professor of family medicine at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. I am proud to introduce the second edition of a practical guide to joint and soft tissue injections and aspirations published by Lippincott, Williams & Wilkins, Walters Kluwer Health. This work represents an ongoing and continuing effort in my career as a practicing and teaching family physician. The second edition features many upgrades when compared to the first, an expanded front matter section, increased number of injection chapters including those relating to skin and skin structures not found in other texts of this type, enhanced coding including the new ICD-10 system, and more support materials contained in the appendix. More importantly, comprehensive case-based videos of aspirations and injections done on actual patients encountered in my office. These are not simulated injections done on models in a studio, but rather live patients with disease and dysfunction receiving therapy in real time. Since the opportunity for filming cannot be predicted in private practice, there was no way that I could keep a professional AV film crew on standby. All of the videos were filmed by myself in my office using a high-definition video camera mounted statically on a tripod. I apologize in advance if some find that the video clips appear to be filmed by an amateur. Joint and soft tissue injections and aspirations are critically important procedures to learn and master to assist our patients in their recovery from the disorders addressed in this text. Benefits of mastery extend from the patient to the provider and further to the healthcare system. Providing these services also supports the medical home model. The formal evidence base for injections and aspirations is admittedly sparse, but growing yearly. Certainly, there is increasing validation for the use of injectable corticosteroids in the initial management of many musculoskeletal disorders. There is also strong anecdotal support for these procedures that is incompletely documented. An important concept to remember is that injections and aspirations are not an end to themselves but rather this is an important component in the initial management of these disorders. Often, a corticosteroid injection may be used to relieve pain and improve function so that other treatments including physical therapy, activity modification, and other interventions may be used to the patient's benefit. Injections augment a knowledgeable history and physical examination by a clinician with a good understanding of musculoskeletal disorders. It is the provider's responsibility to develop knowledge and understanding of the underlying structures and landmarks. I have made every effort to ensure the accuracy of the information in this work as of the date of submission for publication in 2009. However, it remains the individual clinician's responsibility to make the correct diagnosis, identify appropriate landmarks, dose medications and devices properly, use correct administration technique, prescribe ancillary therapies, and get adequate patient follow-up. These issues must be addressed to provide safe and efficacious treatment. This is a rapidly changing subject. For instance, since finishing development of this book, Simdisc 1 has been released and there are several other visco supplements in the pipeline. Studies on the use of botulinum toxin are just now being published for the treatment of musculoskeletal disorders. I have no doubt that other injectable agents will be used in the near future. I am also sure that musculoskeletal ultrasound will play an increasingly prominent role in our offices and clinics. On the practice management side of things, every effort has been made to ensure accurate coding as of the date of publication. You can expect that this area is one that will experience significant changes as well. In closing, I would like to thank my family, office staff, the staff at Lippincott Williams Wilkins, Walters Kluwer Health, and especially my patients for participating in this project. I also thank you, the learners, for trusting in this text to help guide your patient care. Thank you.